A very good evening. Welcome to Biz Roundup on another weekend. I'm Ashing Sunny Veer Singh. Let's have a look at the headlines first. The first budget of the new government will be tabled in Parliament in November. German federal government assures assistance on renewable energy target of Sri Lanka. Plantation minister addresses the issue of refused tea. News in detail. The government last Wednesday announced that the budget for the year 2021 will be presented in Parliament in November. State Minister of Money and Capital Markets and State Enterprise Reforms Ajit Nivad Kabral made this announcement at a media briefing held in Colombo last Wednesday. State Minister Ajit Nivad Kabral said that the budget for 2021 will be tabled in Parliament on the 17th of November this year. He also added that the government had already commenced the drafting of a new budget for next year considering the policy framework introduced by President Gotabe Rajapaksa's vision for Sri Lanka, which is the vision of prosperity. Meanwhile, an official from the Treasury said that Sri Lanka is expecting the budget deficit in 2020 to reach 9% of gross domestic product and tax revenues are recovering with economic activities resuming with coronavirus control. In April, amid a coronavirus lockdown, monthly revenues had fallen to 70 billion rupees. In 2019, average revenues were about 150 billion rupees. The Treasury official was positive with the move and added that in August, tax revenues were 144 billion rupees and that means economic activities are happening. Treasury officials who joined the media briefing says that Sri Lanka has controlled the spread of coronavirus and except the tourist inflows, most activities had bounced back. Preliminary data indicated that exports were again about a 1 billion US dollars in September. In 2019, Sri Lanka had collected 1.73 trillion in taxes and was expecting 1,450 billion in 2020 with a deficit of 8.5% according to revised projections in June 2020. The Cabinet of Ministers has approved to cancel the light rail transit system project planned to be implemented in the western province, taking into consideration the submissions made by Minister of Transport Garmini Lukge. This was announced at the weekly Cabinet Decision press conference held at the Government Information Department last Tuesday. The project to set up a 17 km long LRT line between Colombo and Malabe, initiated under the previous good governance regime, was to be partly funded with a 1.85 billion US dollar loan from Japan International Corporation Agency at a concessionary interest rate of 0.01% and the loan was to be repayable within 40 years and had a 12-year grace period. Nevertheless, a letter issued by the Presidential Secretariat P.B. Jatsundara states that the proposed light railway track project has been suspended by the current government with immediate effect. In the meantime, during the cabinet press conference, it was noted that the project has been suspended since large number of buildings, including houses and business premises, will have to be demolished and the cost of constructing the railway track on towers will be immense. Moreover, it has been found that if the proposed light rail transit system has been implemented, it will incur a heavy operating cost. विकल्पया Nevertheless, addressing the parliament last week, 
former Minister of Megapolis and Western Development, Partly Champika Ranavaka, who was the then subject minister of the project, stressed that suspending the proposed light rail transit Colombo Malabe project by the current government is an act of dismissing one of the best solutions provided for the obstacles of the urban development. Raja may Langadi Tirna, Karagan Tibuna Pratipati may Tirna, Sahal Dumria, Viaprutia, Malambe Sita, Koturtibina Sahal Dumri Viaprutia, Natrakiri. Make a Tatama, Raja Katalabicha, Tamatma Sahanadai, Sieta Dasameke, Poliat Labich, Aurdu Dahatrak, may I give under Vashene, or do Hatalihak Dakwa may I give under Pulwa, Japan a Takshin in Divan Kriavali, Eka Mirate, Vidyakni, Marga Tadaba de Pilman of Visakni, Visham Mortu Vishwidale, Jaika Aetani, Korea Koika Aetani, Miss Sam Aetani Kuma Gala Pu Adhasa. Eanu Evakatape Amatan She Vishin, May Columba Nagarate Adi in a Pradana, Marga Tadaba de Tiena, a Marga Hataktiano, a Marga Hatting, Tadaba de Vadima Marge, which Malambe Pitokutu Marge, Miss in the Hatoragan, Saksata de Nakala. Parisarad de Nakala, Samaja de Nakala, Aurdu Tunakani Ketikala Kulu Podation Seva and Etikala, May Viaprutia Diatkala Bautiko, Eviaprutia Deda Susutune, Nimaven Natibuni. The maker Apiaho Sikarna Kiani, Merate Anagate, Tatiana Barapatalome Nagarika Sangma Dinatina, Barapatalma Prashnikadipu, Wadagat Mugsundumakata, Api Pitupamak Bauta Patina. Country director GIZ Sri Lanka Christian Infeld assures that German government and the GIZ Sri Lanka is always ready to assist Sri Lanka to achieve its ambitious target of going for renewable energy soon. GIZ country director made this assurance addressing a function to appreciate winners of the Green Energy Champion 2019 Sri Lanka, which took place at the GIZ office in Colombo last Tuesday. The Green Champion 2019 Sri Lanka competition was funded by the German Federal Foreign Office as funded by GIEZ Sri Lanka, Sustainable Authority of Sri Lanka and the Ministry of Power. The government sector entry was won by the Kulia Pitya Pradeshya Sabha for its biogas waste management system, a rooftop solar system and promotion of sustainable practices among the community. One of the startup enterprises, Thermal R Industries, received the award in the private sector category for its innovative pilot project, which saw the convert two stroke three wheeler engines to electric drive. Meanwhile, Sabaragamo Janata Padanama emerged the winner in the community based organization sector for increasing the hydroelectricity to power the local Kitul industry and installing a solar power rooftop system to a nearby school for electricity generation. We are very happy to be able to support with the Green Energy Champion to this trend and assist the Sri Lankan government in its ambitious goals in the sector. On the one hand, by providing better access to information on renewable energy, renewable energy sources, and also individual ways to save energy in our daily lives. At the same time, the Green Energy Champion competition supports innovative concepts for green energy solutions. Newly appointed German ambassador to Sri Lanka, Holger Sobe, commended the Sri Lanka's plan on achieving 70% of national electricity production through renewables by the end of 2030. The German ambassador to Sri Lanka made these observations addressing the function to award certificates and prizes to the winners of the Green Energy Champion 2019 Sri Lanka competition at the GIZ office in Colombo. In Germany, the renewable energy's share of power supply rose by over 5 percentage points last year to an all-time high of 46%. But I can assure you, we in Germany, we will not stop at 46%. The German government actually is aiming for renewables to provide 65% of Germany's power mix by the end of the year 2030. And still, there remains a lot to be done, also in Germany. And there remains a lot to be learned. We are not only keen to export our experience in renewable energy. We would also like to learn from other countries, partners, such as Sri Lanka. Just recently, the Sri Lankan government re-emphasized its ongoing commitment to promote renewable energies. The government has made this a top priority which is commendable and very much appreciated. 
Sri Lanka aims at achieving 70% of the national electricity production through renewables by the end of 2030. Thus, Sri Lanka's goal is even more ambitious than Germany's because we are striving for 65% and you want to have it 70%. Stay tuned for more news after this short break. Welcome back after the break. The Colombo Tea Traders Association, the apex body of the country's tea industry, had its 126th anniversary at a function attended by Plantations Minister Dr. Ramesh Patirana and State Minister Kanaka Heirat last week. Addressing the event, Association Chairman Karna Ratna spoke about the adoption of the Ceylon Tea Roadmap 2030 initiative in harmony with the strategic five-year review launched by the Plantation Ministry. He further highlighted the necessity of countering the continued negative publicity by international NGOs against Sri Lanka industry. He also thanked the government for the temporary suspension of the promotion and marketing levy with effect from July 2020. Association chairman also raised the concerns regarding the lack of progress in the registration of the geographical indication of Ceylon tea. Karuna Ratna also spoke over the issue of Ceylon teas increasingly subjected to the adulteration and warned that it adversely affects the international image and harms the quality attributes. Plantation Minister Dr. Ramesh Patrana stresses that the government would establish a new arm for research and development for the tea sector to boost value addition in the sector. Addressing the recent 126th Annual General Meeting of the Colombo Tea Traders Association, Minister further added that the government is considering curbing the processing of refuse tea in the country. Tea is not only a beverage now, it's gone above those normal means. Yes, in yesteryears it was the most famous drink world over. Now we need to think laterally. A lot of cosmetic products, I've seen shampoos, hair care products, skin care products and other means of producing liquor from tea and also producing different forms of alcohol from tea. This is probably the way forward. And in that regard, I wish to state the fact that we would work with the public sector and also with the help of the tea board to establish a different research arm to ensure that we produce more in relation to value-added products in the country because it's become increasingly competitive in the world market, possibly to, uh, to, to compete with the other products which are produced at a lower cost in India and Kenya. And also we have to critically look at the process of using refuse tea. So it has been over a period of time, we produce more refuse tea at the factory level. If you obtain good quality leaves and produce good quality tea, the refuse tea quantity should come down. And we know that. I've seen to my own eyes the way they produce and they, and they process refuse tea. It's a shame. It, it has brought down the name of Ceylon tea to a very low and unacceptable level. We are in consultation with these agencies to relook at, re-engineer, revisit these scenarios and see whether we really need to go ahead with processing of this refuse tea. In the meantime, President of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka, Manil Jayasinghe, stresses that now it is the high time to think beyond the COVID-19 pandemic and make use of the opportunities posed by the COVID-19. He made these observations announcing the theme of the 41st National Conference, which is dubbed Sri Lanka's biggest business summit that will be held from 2nd to 4th of this December at the BMICH Colombo under the theme Abnormal Navigating Through Shattered Norms. While Sri Lanka has been safe in terms of the number of COVID casualties, the economic crisis has, however, spiralled beyond our control largely due to the global shutdown, which has also severely affected tourism and even exports. So we are not necessarily insulated. Actually, it is tourism, exports, and uh, there are a couple of others also that probably might get impacted. One is uh, probably the worker remittances, which is also likely to have an impact. And the uh, issue is when you uh, impact uh, tourism, it has a lot more implications on various sectors. The whole hotel industry is wondering when they are going to start. They had a problem last year. Before that problem, they recovered from that problem. Another problem comes up. Now the question is when are they going to recover? 
and still there is no clear indication by the government as to when our airports are going to be opened, which I believe will take some time. But then the question is, how do you navigate through these troubled waters? But I believe that there are opportunities as well. There are opportunities such as, you know, the whole world is questioning about China being the biggest producer. So they want alternates. Not that they want to move out of China, but they want alternates. The Japanese government took steps to say that they will fund any business who wants to move their production facilities out of China. So these are opportunities. We will be back after a short break. Welcome back after the break. Leading company CRISPO continues partnership with the National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka as part of its ongoing mission to empower and support the young sporting talent in rural Sri Lanka. Thus, CRISPO signs a memorandum of understanding with the National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka to launch the NOCSL CRISPO Next Champ scholarship program. Under the agreement, CRISPO will serve as a sponsor for 20 deserving athletes scouted by National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka with potential to qualify for the Youth Olympic Games 2022, Asian Games 2022, Commonwealth Games 2022 and South Asian Games 2021. In addition, this partnership will see the launch of an online portal which for the very first time in Sri Lanka will enable members of the public to financially sponsor rural athletes, school sports associations and sports clubs and chambers. All funds collected through this portal will be fully dispersed to the entities they were contributed under presses carefully overlooked and strictly managed by National Olympic Committee of Sri Lanka. The scholarships will cover costs such as nutrition, transportation costs, coaching fees, accommodation, logistics such as clothing, sports gear and medical expenses necessary for the training, grooming and development of each selected athlete. The program will also give athletes access to a combination of high-value tools and world-class mentors including foreign training exposures. In 2018, we launched this program as Chris Monix Champ. We had a very single, very simple objective when we launched this program, which is what we wanted to identify talented athletes, mainly giving priority into the rural sector, because they deserve it. And we wanted to showcase them. We wanted to bring them to the limelight and give them an opportunity to shine and to become the next champ. And today, we are proud to tell you that we have exceeded over 120 programs as such, which means we have identified over 120 such talented athletes who can represent our country in the international arena. Going forward, we have the Olympic 2020, Asian and Commonwealth Games 2022, and the Olympic 2024 in Paris. Of course, 2020 Olympic will be held next year. Our aim is to make sure that we start winning medals. We have done in SAF Games, and Susantika and Crowd Darsha, they have done in the Asian Games and Asian Championship and Commonwealth. But it had eluded us almost a decade. The time has come that we have to have many athletes continuously performing and winning. Now, a subject expert at First Capital Holdings will join us bringing you the usual analysis and the forecast on the trading of the stock market. This was a mixed week for the stock market uh, this week, mainly because uh, if we start off on Monday, we had a significant uh, surge in the market, uh, continuing from last week, the upward trend, where retailers were very bullish and buying interest was uh, quite strong. However, as the week went along on Tuesday and Wednesday with the sudden downgrade of Moody's where we saw the country sovereign rating uh, was uh, downgraded by two notches by Moody's and with that uh, some negativity came into the market and we saw significant selling pressure even from the local front hitting the market on both Tuesday and Wednesday as the index fell by a large sum of uh, index points. 
However, we had this uh, 6,000 uh, psychological barrier and on Monday though it was breached, afterwards with the downward trend, again the index came below the 6,000 mark and uh, if we take on Friday, with the $1 billion sovereign, which was due to be paid by the Sri Lankan government, being uh, the money being transferred and the uh, payment being done, there was some positivity uh, coming back into the market again. Bringing the forecast for the coming week for Capital Holdings highlights that the positive momentum of the market will continue in the coming week. On a significant note, head of research of First Capital, Dimantha Matthew, explained that the sizable interest in the market can be expected mainly from the mid-cap counters. Uh, looking at the coming week, with uh, taking on the positive sentiment of the repayment of the $1 billion sovereign, we feel that this positive sentiment will flow on during the week and the retail and high net worth investors will be more positive uh, to buy into the market. So with that, uh, we feel that there will be sizable interest in the market uh, mainly from the local front and uh, that is likely to be more concentrated on the mid-cap counters. Blue chips also, uh, we feel that will have a, a bit of interest but with foreign outflow likely to continue in the coming weeks, the interest in uh, the blue chips might be a bit slow. But Comparatively, with the valuations being more attractive now in the blue chip counters, we feel that uh, there will be sizably higher uh, portion of interest in blue chip counters uh, in the coming weeks. And that's all the news for today. See you tomorrow with State of Business at 7.45 p.m. Until then, take care. Good night.